I think that you should connect first, then convert, okay? This is what I believe. I'm sharing that with you for nothing. Just get out there and succeed. Be 95% low pressure, 5% high pressure. And so, so many of you are asking me, Ricky, when do I apply that 5%? When do I be high pressure? Okay, when can I ask them for the business? When can I tell them to sign the line here? So let's dive right into this. So this is about conversion, right? This is literally about converting. How you take someone and you, you ask for the business and you ask in a way where they want to sign the line, sign the contract, sign the listing, make the offer, put their property on the market, whatever the case may be, we're wanting to try to convert them into a deal so that we can make some money. I totally get it, I understand, and that's why I wanted to make this video. First off, I think it's really important to understand the mechanics of the conversion, okay? Because I think that this is really important. I think that you should connect first, then convert, okay? Connect first, then convert. So what we have to do is we have to really get to know someone, all right? We need to find out more about them. We need to find out what they're trying to do Okay, I like to ask if they have an agent they're going to work with and kind of try to establish, you know, my foot right there in the relationship. Okay, where do I stand? Am I going to be this agent? Do I have a shot to be the agent, you know, in this transaction? What, what's going on here? Okay, and then from there, once I establish myself as their agent, you know, I want to know more about why. Why they're trying to do what they want to do. It's not to close a deal. It's not to make calls. It's not... It's to make people feel comfortable with you. True or false? If someone doesn't feel comfortable with you, are they gonna do business with you? No. That comes before trying to close the deal, doing the paperwork, making your calls. We gotta develop this skill first. Your first impression with someone is the most important. And if they feel, how do you make people feel comfortable with you? By being comfortable with them. If you're nervous, they're gonna be nervous. They're gonna think, he's nervous, I'm nervous. I don't know what we're nervous about, but I, I don't wanna do business with that. I'm definitely not gonna do a deal with this person. Something, there's red flags everywhere, right? If you're scared, they're gonna be scared. So you have to put yourself in this position where you feel comfortable with people you don't know. How do we do that? By knowing deep down that we're there to help them. It's called being confident in our intentions. If we're there to help them, and that's all that matters, we should not care what they think about us. Yes, no, not everyone's gonna like you. I would say on average, maybe 70% of people either don't like you or already have an agent. We're looking for the 20%, 20 to 30% of people who love you and will do business with you for the rest of their life. But you gotta go through the 70 to get to the 30. You're scared to go through the 70, so you never get to the 20. But I wanna get to the 20, but you gotta go through the 70, right? F-E. We have to give people F-E, friend, family, effect. This is where you make your clients and customers feel like they're part of your family. How do you do that? By talking to them like they are your brother, mother, son, daughter, cousin, best friend from high school. Next time you're talking to your mom, dad, brother, cousin, take a mental snapshot of that moment in time and think about how comfortable they are with you and you are with them, how you'll tell them anything, they'll tell you anything, the speed of your voice, the tone of your voice, your body language, everything. And then start implementing that same feeling to your prospects. And it won't happen overnight, but just try. Just start moving in that direction. I only want you to get 1% better every day. Not 20%, not 100%, 1%. So just move towards it. You don't have to conquer it every day. This is a, this is a marathon. This business is a long-term goal. There's little short victories that add up to the long-term goal, but we gotta be in this long-term. We have to go fast right now. I want you to think speed in between everything else except for in front of a client. Think speed until you're in front of a client, then think quality. The world stops when we're in front of someone. Spend all day with them if they want. Don't try to rush out of that conversation to get to another one. Let's go, this, let's go down this road. You don't know where this road's gonna take you. Well, see, I've made 100,000 calls to get here. Okay, cold calls. And then after that, I really don't make cold calls anymore. I'm so busy, I've so, I've built such a monster that I can't 
I wish I could. And you know what will happen when the market crashes? I'll be a cold calling machine because it'll slow down and it'll open up my time to make calls. See, see the market does this, deals do this, but your effort stays here. So, so you're, when the market's up here, we're busy closing deals. When it goes down here, we keep the same amount of effort going. We just check, we just flip it to making calls. We're either calling to close deals or we're calling to find deals. But you 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 go with the flow of the market. See what I'm saying? Yeah. And that creates that creates a situation where you have consistent business. See what I mean? Yeah. Great. Thank you. How do you look like you know like you're cold calling it and then like the days that you have that people are just you know mean to say or ignorant to you with that and you have to get you know I know you I mean what do you do with your mindset with that? Like because you can have a day like full of that and then go on the next day, you know. Try again tomorrow. I might finish my call session and say, you know, it didn't go great, whatever. The thing is, is I don't care about the results. I just want to make the calls. I don't care if a hundred people hang up on me. Because I know tomorrow, five people are going to do a deal with you. I don't care about the results. I just want to do the work. See what I mean? Gotcha. Um, but I know where you're going with it. The thing is, you need to get a lot of sleep drink a lot of water, shut your mind off at night so you're recharged every day so you don't have those down moments. But then, if you do have a bad call session, just chalk it up. If you're gonna do it every day, one bad call session out of 30 is, is normal. You know, like, be really happy that you had a bad call session because we got that one out of the way. Now we can have a bunch of good ones, you know what I'm saying? How late, how late are you up at night though? 10 o'clock. Okay. I go to bed at 10 o'clock every night. Wow. The daily routines are literally why I'm where I'm at. And the 4.30 was an addition to what I was already doing. I was like, where can I find another hour to produce? And I was like, oh, well, nobody's bothering me at 4.30. So I decided that was gonna be my extra hour to outwork everybody. And that's what's gonna take me to even higher levels. See what I mean? Every, we, all, we all only have the same amount of, of hours in a day. You know, like you have the same amount of hours as I do, right? As Ryan Serhant, as you know, Grant Cardone, as Dan and Carrie. We all got the same amount of hours in a day. You know what I mean? And when you think about that, it's like, well, you know, I can talk to more people than anybody else in, in this. We all have the same amount of time. I'm gonna beat everybody in terms of how many people I'm gonna talk to. 